Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. Today's April 7th, 2023, and we went out today to look for new queens coming out of hibernation. We checked on an old nest from last season, 2022, and sure enough, there was a brand new queen or foundress sitting on that old nest. She was likely one of the gynes or fertile queens that was born on that nest last year. And here she seems to have returned to that nest and she will probably try to make her own nest now. So we decided to capture her and put her into a habitat in our research lab and see if we can get her to make a nest in captivity. So before we captured her, we just observed her for a while just to see if there were any others. Sometimes there's a co-foundress, sometimes two wasps will come back to the old nest that they were born in. But she seemed to be by herself. She's the very first wasp we've seen in 2023. So she's a special wasp because she kicks off the new wasp season for us. She didn't seem to be feeding. She didn't seem to be foraging anywhere. She just seemed to be hovering around where the old nest was. So she's probably freshly out of hibernation, just waking up. Adult wasps like her would typically be looking for sweet carbohydrate fluids like nectar, honeydew, that kind of thing, but there's not a lot of that out there yet. So she is probably very hungry and ready for a meal if she can find one. Now, Polistes diminula, the European paper wasp, they're an invasive species here in North America. They've been here for a few decades now. They're well known to start their nest a little earlier in the season than our native wasps, like the Polistes metricus or the Polistes fuscatus, the northern paper wasp. So they get a head start. And as you can see, she's the first wasp we've seen. We have not even seen any of our natives yet. So that allows the Polistes diminula to get a head start on the resources in the area and establish their nest in areas that might normally go to our native wasps. We're going to transition to field audio now while we capture her. So today we're just going to use a clear container. And we're going to capture the wasp. And we'll put her into captivity and we'll see if we can't get her to create a nest in captivity. Here's our specimen. She looks healthy and active. Looks like a good fertile queen. She'll be ready to build a nest and we'll try to make her do that in captivity. Here we have our Polistes diminula, European paper wasp queen that we just captured outside. And what we're going to do is create a habitat for her where she can hopefully begin a nest and here's the supplies we use for that. There's going to be cardboard put on the bottom of the habitat so that it's removable and keeps it clean. There's going to be cardboard here that we use to create a structure in the corner of the habitat. And that typically is where they will try to make a nest and hang it from the overhang. And then there's going to be a water dish, a honey dish, which is the bottle cap, There'll be some natural items that we've heat treated in advance to kill off any parasites or wood boring insects or anything like that that we don't want in the habitat. These natural items will just be for her to climb on or shelter beneath. And then there's some paper. This is multicolored construction paper in light colors. And what we're going to try to do is encourage her to use that for her nesting material, as opposed to collecting wood fiber in the wild. We're gonna hope that she makes a nest out of this multicolored paper, which we've seen done in research studies before. Hopefully we can make that happen here. We'll see how she does. We've used our cardboard to cut a base piece that's been put inside here. We've used the rest of the cardboard to create an eaves or an overhang that would be attractive to a wasp who wants to make a nest. They like to, to set it up right here underneath the, the ceiling. So that'll go right here in the corner of the habitat. And hopefully she'll attach her nest to the top of this cardboard right about in here. And that's what they will typically do. Sometimes they'll put it on the wall. So we roughed up the cardboard a little bit uh, just by scratching it with scissors. And that allows the wasp to see fibers. And it looks like a more attractive place to try to attach her nest. So as you can see here, the cardboard overhang is now in the upper corner of the habitat. 
Next thing we do is we take our shelter pieces and our climbing pieces and we just put them in randomly into the habitat wherever they fit. You take the bark pieces, just distribute them kind of evenly if you can. And here's an old coconut shell. These are the types of things that wasps like to take shelter under. So you want to have plenty of that available for them so that they can have a place where they feel safe, that they can climb and hide. Here we're back on voiceover for a moment just to explain how you should properly heat treat any natural items you intend to put into a habitat. We're going to show you how we do that. So here we're going to heat treat some items that are just natural items we put into the habitats. We're going to pull it out of an old habitat that we're not using right now. We're going to heat treat it in our little oven here that we use exclusively for these things. And these natural items will be put in the bottom of the habitat as comfort items and shelter items for our new queen. So you don't need too many items. Just a few natural items for the wasp to climb on or shelter under. And then we're going to go ahead and cook that in the toaster oven here for a period of time until it's definitely going to be clear of any parasites or wood boring insects or all the things you don't want inside your habitat. We'll set this for maybe 250 degrees and let it cook for at least half an hour. Next thing we'll do is take some of this paper, tear it up, and get ready for the wasp, because the more torn up it is, the more fiber is exposed, and the more likely they will be to use it as nesting material. We're just taking the paper and we're scraping it up with scissors. That way the fiber is more obvious to the wasp and you just sort of scrape and scrape and scrape and make it look kind of beat up and available to be used for nesting material. We've now taken some of our paper and we put it in here in a little container with a nice bridge of a stick that the wasp can walk up and discover the paper and hopefully we'll use that for nesting material. Now we have to put in food and water. Water goes in the cup that's brown and plastic. Honey will go in the bottle cap. So we're gonna fill that up with honey. And the wasps, adult wasps, all eat sweet carbohydrate fluids like nectar. So that's why we put honey in there. That's all the adult wasp will need to sustain itself along with water while it's building its nest out. Hopefully we'll see that happen soon. Now we have food and water in the habitat, and we also have the nesting material and some natural items to climb on and shelter underneath. We're now ready to add our foundress here into the habitat, so that comes next. So all you do is you open your container. The Polistes wasps are pretty mellow, despite all the noise and motion. It's usually pretty easy to just put your container in and let them come out. We'll just pop the container right in there and we'll let her find her way out of there. And once she comes out, we'll go ahead and pull the container back out. She's in there and we want her to come out of her container. The easiest way to deal with that is to put a light on top of the habitat and she'll climb right up toward the light and that'll take care of getting her out of the temporary container. So this is a bright light called a loom cube. It's great for photography. It's super bright, comes in different settings. And we're just gonna set that up top. Typically wasps will respond to light and try to go to where the light is. So I'm gonna jostle her container around a little bit and hopefully we can get her to move. Come on, come on out of there. Go on up toward the light. There she goes. Go ahead, climb up toward the light. They will usually go up there pretty readily. And then once she realizes she can come out, And 
And there she goes. Now that she's out of the container, we can just remove the container from the habitat and we're set. Now she's exploring the habitat and that's what we want. We want her to find the food. She'll be very hungry this time of year where she just woke up from hibernation probably. And she's got very little to eat yet out in the environment as far as nectar on plants and sweet carbohydrate fluids is what she'll be looking for. So honey will be perfect. And we have to let her understand where the food is. So we're gonna work on that now by trying to get her to come down toward the light and find her honey dish. Meanwhile, she looks pretty calm and pretty curious. So we'll go back on voiceover here for a moment, just to make note of the fact that if you ever do want to set up a wasp habitat, Polistes wasps of all the different species, Dominula, Metricus, Fuscatus, whatever you can find, they make great study subjects because they're so mellow. We like to say they've got easy personalities for this kind of thing. So here we are all set up. We've got our new queen or foundress here on the top shelf. Down on the bottom, there are already two active habitats. One you have here is a Polistes dominula habitat. We've got about 12 or 14 of them in here that have been here since August of 22. A few of them came in later than that, but it's a long-term habitat. Also down below is a Polistes fuscatus that's been here since last fall of 22. So hopefully our new roommate here will begin building a nest pretty soon. That's the experiment. We'll see how it goes. Here while she's out exploring, we're gonna try to feed her a little bit of honey. Give her a head start on the nutrition. So we're gonna just dip a little bit of our honey stick in there. And we're gonna go ahead and try to feed her. See if she can respond to the food. There she goes. She's gonna be very hungry. Yeah, it tastes pretty good, doesn't it, hon? You eat that up. Give you some energy. She'll probably hang on to the stick. And we're gonna to try to guide her down to the honey dish. There you go. We want her to end up down here where she knows she can feed anytime she's hungry. There she goes. Back on voiceover here for a moment. As you can see, this wasp was very hungry. She had been out in the wild. She had just come out of hibernation and she was very hungry, but there's not a lot out there to eat yet. Not a lot of flowers blooming and that kind of thing yet. So she was ready to eat. And she spent several minutes at the honey dish fueling up. And so we have a few shots of that here for you. One note worthy of mentioning here is that the adult wasps will always drink sweet carbohydrate fluids either from nectar or honeydew or from some of the fluids that their larva will eventually produce. Larva have kind of a saliva-like substance that they regurgitate up to the adult wasps and the adult wasps will actually drink that fluid from the larva as well as the flower nectar and whatever they can find in the wild. But at this early stage of spring, before the wasps are even producing eggs or larva, when they're just about to getting ready to build their nest right after hibernation, all they need is nectar, so they don't hunt insects at this point. You'll notice as they begin laying eggs and the larvae begin to hatch, then they will start hunting insects and bring that protein back to the nest in the form of maloxated 
meatballs, insect meat that they chew up and then feed to the larva because the larva will eat mostly protein. But for now, there's none of that happening. She's going to focus on just getting herself some energy and building her nest. So we'll let you know how it goes here with our little nest building experiment. Hopefully she'll actually create a nest here in the habitat. If not, fair enough. We can just add her to our other Polistes Dominula habitat and she'll have some friends down there. So stay tuned. Hopefully there'll be plenty more wasps after this one, our first one of 2023. As always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment and share. And we'll see you again soon. Have a good one.